cold open edition of Oilers Nation Radio. Hello. As we are on the road, coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. Jay's in on this episode. Hey, Jay. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hello, Jay. I'm doing well. I missed you. you. I've been gone for a little while. Yeah, you've been busy this morning. Uh, Liam's here. BM's here as well. We're doing a little hotel edition of the podcast, and it's going to be probably a little bit of a quicker one as well. I was looking at the mirror thinking it was the camera. The camera's right there. I know. I know. But it blinded by the light. Looking right into the mirror. Yeah, it's very bizarre. It's all good. I can see how uh, how that would be a little distracting. Um, But anyways, welcome into the show. We got a lot of stuff to get through here because the Edmonton Oilers are up one nothing in the Western Conference final. Oh, How's it supposed to be louder? Just wait. It's not loud enough. Bang. Oh. Oh, That's okay. Jack. I've lost my. There we oh, go. There we go. BM. Yeah, I've lost my ability to loud clap. What before the hell? Uh, before we get to well, all of our usual segments, can we just start with this? How about the fact this is officially the furthest the Edmonton Oilers have made it in the Connor McDavid era? Hooray! Well done, Edmonton Oilers. We did it. We finally did it. We did do it. And I'm sure we, you guys just finished O'Any, so you've probably talked about this, but that, and I was saying this on the walk back to the hotel after the game, if this is the Edmonton Oilers, if this is the playoff El- Edmonton Oilers, mm-hmm. they've now proven it. They can play this way for three straight games. Uh-huh. Something special is forming here. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm feeling You're done it. for the rest of the pod. Yeah, he's no, just, just no about that. You just don't want to do, You don't want to take it any further than that. All right. But I'm feeling special. I'm catching your drift. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like the last three games, the Oilers have not only scored at five on five, which is something that people say they can't do. Mm-hmm. It's all we do. Their PK has been elite. 19 of 19. The last uh-huh. uh, 19 of the last 19 kills they've executed perfectly. And last night they won without even having a power play outside of the too many men. Like you can't tell me that the stars are fucking angels that didn't deserve anything. But even so, the Oilers oh, found a way through it. They deserved that. They deserved that game from tip to tip. We made one home Without run mistake. Question. Yeah. And then they got lucky on a second goal. Like other than that, they did not deserve to win. But as Tyler said on a way on Oilers Nation every day, it was one of those ones where bad mistake by Kulak, no yep. doubt. But it didn't compound into like more mistakes after it could, that. Yeah, they locked it could have it spiraled. Down. No, and that's the thing. I was sitting there before that second goal got scored. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, they're. I, I feel confident they're going to close this out. They're not giving me any doubts. And a bad bounce happened, and these things happen, and it still didn't deter them. Mm-hmm. They killed off that four minute penalty. Was I couldn't like, believe it. When we that, were, I was so I was saying the f word so many times. Jay, we were down bad. so mad. We were down bad when Connor got that four minute oh. uh, penalty in the right at the start of overtime. Like basically one of the first shifts of overtime. He goes to the box for four minutes. We were down bad, but we go <sighs> okay. Let's get this kill. Let's make it happen, and then we'll see. Because I was saying on Oilers Nation every day that in my head, all I could imagine, and obviously just my imagination in fantasy land, Connor McDavid sitting in the box. Knowing he's in there for four minutes in overtime, all I could think about was Connor being like, kill this off and I'm going to end this myself. Kill this off and I'm going to end this myself. And, you know, it took a little bit longer than we would have liked, but you got the job done. That was, uh, I believe, Spall sent to put this out. Six straight double minor kills for the Oilers. Wow. Like, how? Yeah. Anyways, and, uh, you know, and, and, and just poor form. And I know there's a format to this show, and I'm sorry. Is. Yeah. But poor form by the American Airlines Arena. For turning off booze sales. Oh, that would have been a good cold performer, Jay, for hot and cold performers. That uh, is my cold performer. Well, Damn it. We're not in that segment. <laughs> uh, what segment are we in? It is the delicious debate brought to you by our friends at Wendy's. Speaking of delicious, Wendy's only ever uses fresh Canadian beef. That's never seen the inside of a freezer in all their burgers, whether it's a Baconator, a Dave Single, or Jay's favorite, the JBC. You'll mm. only ever find real fresh beef. That's real juicy and loaded with fresh toppings. Download the Wendy's app. Check out the latest deals and order a burger. That's only job is being delicious. The Oilers only job is picking up big dubs. And I want to know, gentlemen, the delicious debate. What part of game one gives you the most confidence that Edmonton can win this series? I'll start. The Oilers had some 10 bell chances that they did not execute on, and they still won. I think of Dylan Holloway right at the end of the game. He had that really good look. If he lifts that up over Ottinger's path, he's game over. With it. I think yeah, he's going he to learn from patient, that mistake. Yeah. Warren Fogle, either shoot it or he, dump it that, in the that would, no, he, he, I know. He did the right move there. He had Ottinger open to score a goal and just lost the handle. And this, even when he lost it, it was so close. It was I know. Still. The second one is... 
I can't foresee a situation where the Oilers only get one power play again. Yeah. Yeah, the refing, like, whatever. I'm not here to bitch about the refing, but that was whack. Wickety, wickety, whack. It was uh, just, it's just interesting that, like, I'm looking up at the Jumbotron last night from our seats. Great seats, by the way. Oh, man, we did really good there. Ten minutes of power play time for Dallas, two for the Oilers. It was just, like, so lopsided that I can't see that happening again. Normally, the refs kind of love the game management and evening things up, but that just wasn't the case last night. Oilers still got the job done. I think mine will be how good that top line looks last night and oh, that they man. can dominate against the Tanev or is it Essa Lindell. There was so much talk about how Tanev was going to shut down the Oilers and McDavid specifically, and then they came in and scored the first two goals of the game on Tanev and, and Lindell. Yeah. So that Zachary, is me, Dakary, Hyman. was so good yesterday. That goal, albeit a weak one on Ottinger, that only happens because Zach Hyman has that dog in him, and he outworked the defenders God. right there and slid it yep. through the five hole. Mm-hmm. Just he was so good on the puck last night, so so good. Mine is just a complete team buy into defense. Yes, blocking shots, back checking. It was like, man, this this group has just they believe they believe. I said it to Tyler last night during the game. It's funny how Leon Draisaitl is an absolute warlord offensively in the playoffs. He is now on a 13-game point streak. Every single game of the playoffs, he's got a point. But on the other end of the puck, he's doing some really nice things defensively, including some hard back checks that come at key, key moments. God, when he just wants to play, like and when he's committed, he is just a threat on all ends of the ice. And just goes back to that conversation where those two Stars fans came to our table last night. He's like, he's like I hate Leon Draisaitl. Like, And we go, why? Yeah. And he goes, well, it's because he's so damned good. Yeah. Playoff Leon is a beast. And I, I don't think this will happen the entire series, but the Oilers did a really good job last night of making the stars, stars quiet. Like yep. Jason Robertson kind of didn't even see he him. Was playing. Didn't even he did see get him. an assist on the time goal. He did get that, but that was like just well, again, it was a bad bounce. Made a play no, no, he was trying know? to shoot it towards the net and it just kind of kicked out. Yeah, and like Wyatt Johnston was quiet. I actually really like Stankoven yesterday. That guy is so did the fans. The fans behind us yeah, who are passionate did. Stars fans him. really love uh, Stank. Come on, Stank. The Stank Oven. Yeah. Um, if you had to, uh, actually, that'll be a separate question, so I'll, I'll ignore it for now. So, BM, what was your answer to the delicious debate? In, I don't know. In short form, I got, I got a bunch of things. They I just didn't w- capitalize on their chances. And oh. They still won. Yeah, they still won. They found a way to grind it out at five on five. They did not score a goal on the power play. This team is built different. They look different. They feel different. They just they're buying in. Yeah, they're supporting each other. They supported each other really, really well last night. Like Jay said, committing to defense. That is a huge huge turning point for this team because yeah. for years we'd be like oh they can't defend they gotta yeah. outscore their issues it has to be a track meet yeah they're beginning to believe they are matrix reference. what was your answer uh the dominance of the top line against tanev and Lindell. They're back. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah that was good jay yours uh the buy into team defense buy into team defense yeah and john goins talked to us about that on on every day today where he was like that's a decision He's mm-hmm. like, every player at this level, and I'm paraphrasing him a bit, you should go listen to the full segment. He's like, every player at this level knows what they're supposed to do. It's a matter of actually being disciplined and committed enough to go out and do it on a routine basis. So I love that. I'll go a different way with mine. Stuart Skinner looked like January, February Stuart Skinner. Mm-hmm. And it's now been three straight games yep. where Stuart Skinner's looked like, or I shouldn't, the first period against Vancouver in game six was rough. So we'll say, you know, two periods with that game, five up to five, and now up to what would be nine periods. It's been nine straight periods of Stuart Skinner looking like at his peak Stuart Skinner. And someone brought up an interesting point in the chat today. There were a lot of Oilers who were sick in that last series. Against it Vancouver. is so evident now and getting more evident by the game. Hyman looks better. McDavid looks better. Ekholm looks miles better. All these guys. Another one. Stuart's, Stuart's oh, sorry, Skinner, ahead, Stuart Skinner might have been sick was the point they made. And I don't like giving everyone the out yeah, and but just it, saying every player who was bad was sick. But he's looking great right now. Well, in like the team defense kind of limited the high quality chance, but when we needed that save, we got that save. Yep. The last one I want to do in my heart of hearts, Dallas poked the bear last night. Connor McDavid was alive. That was probably his best game of the playoffs, or at least over the last round, he was all oh, over. He the could place. have had five goals. Last he night. was all over the place, and you know he could have ended it in the first OT period. Credit to Ottinger for making a for like a desperation save. McDavid first shift of the second OT game over. And he said like because of that, because he knows it, you can't really say he screwed up there, but you know, if he just shot that earlier yeah. instead of taking his time, like that goes in and he's like, I would not have been able to sleep. 
Yeah. If we if if we lost because I missed that, and so he, he took matters in his own hands. He took that penalty early in OT. Which is then, how do you retroactively call a penalty? So, it wasn't called on the ice. So, so we the learned line, the answer. The linesmen are allowed to discuss if they believe it was a double mi- if it was a double minor or a major, and Duchesne was bleeding. But the suspicious part of it, but all shit like is that, that has like, happened so many times where guys totally. get cut. Yeah, and you can go to a ref and say I'm cut. Yeah, I agree. They don't, I think don't the, do shit. The linesmen are the ones who have to initiate it. But fucking the, linesmen the, need to learn how to drop the fucking puck and oh, operate no a face off. The stupid part about all of that was how they played it on the jumbotron and then they looked. So it looked super suspicious. Oh my god! And then Duchesne runs down the hall, and then all of a sudden back. he sees the refs are delivered. He runs over to him. <laughs> Go play your fucking guitar. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah. well. Get very him. well, I might add. You're a very talented musician. Focus no, on your music. Not better than Cooper Morody, uh, though. <laughs> Connor McDavid was given first star of the game last night. And I do think, like, the way the three stars work is you have to submit them by the end of regulation. So what you'll do is just say, like, third star, second star, first star. They'll just write down whoever scores the game winner gets the first star. So Connor McDavid got the first star. He was great. But who would you guys say? Part two of a delicious debate, if you will. Who would you guys say was Edmonton's best player last night? Zach. 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 I, I say Stu. <clears throat> Hyman's a great answer, though. Like, that work he did on that goal, and he was buzzing. Just he all had, the time. Like, he, he four was, shots. He, yeah. was a, he was a factor. Puck hog. Yeah. I, I'll say Stu as well, I suppose. Hyman. I was going to say McDavid, but. McDavid's great. Yeah. Like, it's it just, yeah. But, but there really wasn't, and this is, an, this is a credit to the team. I just thought they all played so well. Like, it is hard to pick out, like, that guy was unreal because of this and this. It's like collectively, like they just worked as a team and accomplished and, what they went to do. And that McDavid goal, like it was great redirection, but like hell of a play by Bush. Hell of oh, a yeah. play. Hell nice of a like, little... just one like it cut he he pinches in, that comes around one like just good vision by that him. whole sequence was fantastic. Like Nuge had a nice zone and en- entry, went around the net, chipped it over to Bouchard. Perfect pass by Bouchard. Like you saw the minute McDavid scores, like it wasn't even me, he just pointed right at Bush. And then Holloway pointing at Banjo I was guy. Say, speaking of, <laughs> yeah, that was wicked. That was so cool. Damn it, that was my hot performance. Oh. Let's move on. <laughs> you can't let us talk, Tyler. You uh, should have started with hot and cold before performers. We, before we move off <laughs> onto the next segment, just I also want to give a little bit of love to the fourth line. All three of those guys. Yep. I thought that line of Yanmark, Carrick, and Brown were very yes. effective. And Knobloch wasted no opportunity to put them out on the rolled ice. Rolled them. He just rolled the lines through. Love and it. I thought that that third line fourth line i should say they played really really effective no minutes. i think you are right i think it is that third line i believe it's three games in a row now that line has played the third most minutes as a unit mm-hmm. at five and five and credit to him it's not they are earning everything yes. they're playing so well but, like, but uh, just it goes back to like vegas last year right they could roll four lines because yeah. there was that trust and like all that just helps like give it be able to give connor and leon more rest and not have to just absolutely ride the shit out of them goes a long way because it makes their meet their minutes now more meaningful because mm-hmm. you're assured they're best. Let's move along and get into a little bit of betting talk, gentlemen, for our friends over at Bet365, the largest sports betting platform globally. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. And if you want to get in on the action, head to Bet365, create an account, and use the promo code OILYBONUS. That is the promo code OILYBONUS on Bet365. Last night, our squad bet, actually got pretty close. I was the heel. You were the heel. We put it together on yesterday's edition of Real Life. Basically what we do, the four of us each pick a leg, we throw in Oilers money line, and we see if we can win some money, get the drinks paid for kind of thing. So last night, we did Oilers money line. My leg was Boosh Point. Got it on the OT winner. Nice. I had uh, Drysaddle over one and a half. I don't think he got that. Uh, Did he not? I thought he had two. No, he didn't. Oh, you're okay. Good. I'm not the only goose. But we were eat. okay. Go ahead, Jay. I had Ekholm goal and Boosh and Ekholm almost and dry side goal. That would have been oh, and dry. Oh, that was triple threat. He hit the post. Yeah, because Liam's hit Heim, as Heim well. Goal. Heim and goal. Thank so goodness. yeah, it went dry settled to Boosh to Ekholm and he hit the crossbar. If oh. that would have hit, we would have been very very. I just rich. I but I, I want to thank uh, Bet three six five for having the Oilers as dogs. I was a very happy money line better last night. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I bet the dogs again tomorrow. Well, in essence, they should be. I bet you the line will come down a bit because they got the one. They might be plus 100. Well, I'll still take that. I'll take that because what is something like I was reading it this morning. And I'm going to screw up the stat a little bit. The Oilers were underdogs maybe like six, seven times eight. all season. Eight. eight. We looked yesterday, right? It was eight. 
Mm-hmm. I'm keeping it simple in the playoffs uh, and just betting money line. But with Bet365, it it's fun to do that same game parlay. I love doing this squad bet with you guys. We've been able, been able to hit a couple, uh, and and it's a lot of fun to do that. And there's no there's no better position than when you're on a squad bet and your leg hits and you get to say my job's done yeah that was nice i it just sat great. back and relaxed just today when i'm in school <laughs> yeah so as we uh as we look ahead to tomorrow gentlemen the oilers are opening as even bigger underdogs oh! for the game against the dallas i gotta Stars. get on it right now they are plus 120 on bet 365 the same game parlay portal is open so we're gonna throw in oilers money line and and maybe we'll give ourselves a little bit of time to to think and change over the next 24 hours but for now let's uh let's throw together a few options that we like hmm you know what i'm going to do ryan Nugent hopkins o- to to register a point he is sneakily like putting in a solid pl- uh postseason run here he's yeah. got a lot of assists we'd like to get a couple more goals in there but he's also doing that more recently as well so i'm going to pick a nuge point i can feel it already can you scroll down the points cuz i want to see if i can Yep, one second here. Player milestones points on bet three six five. Kane. I'll, I'll do. I'll do Ekholm point. Ekholm point. Nuge point. Liam. Well, oh, that means we need a goal. I thought Jay was going to boost us up with like. Well, a, it's plus one six five for the point. Well, that. <laughs> that could be coming. It could be. I will say, Fogel is getting closer. B- 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 Kane goal. Ooh, yeah. Ooh I like that too. Kane goal. Nuge point. Ekholm point. I'll juice it up with a shot prop. I'm loving Hyman over three and a half. Okay. Give it to me. So there's our four combined with Oilers money line for what? our same game parlay. Um, there you go. Shout out to our friends at Bet365. If you want to ride along with us, let us know. Send us a screenshot of, uh, yeah, of you riding that. along with, with the crew here. That is our same gamer for game two uh, between Edmonton and Dallas. It all goes tomorrow night. Programming note, we will have a special edition of Oilers Nation every day tomorrow at noon Mountain Time from Dallas. And then it's pre-gaming with Boardsy live from Greta later on in the evening, one hour before the game, leading you right up until puck drop. Borzy, Pat Puff, Brett, Waz, the whole crew is going to be out at Greta for the game tomorrow night. Uh, it is now time for Ask the Idiots, and it's brought to you by Boston Pizza. It's been 30 years since a Canadian team has won hockey's ultimate prize for some teams a lot longer. What would it take for Canadian hockey fans to set aside their differences and work together to end this drought? Is it their team or nothing? According to the Canucks fan we saw on the street yesterday in Dallas, He's on the Oilers bandwagon. So shout out to the Canucks fans who are rooting for the oil Mm. to bring one home for Canada and shout out to Boston Pizza for being our playoff partner this year. Ask the idiots for BPs. Follow us on the Nation Network on LinkedIn. We post a nice video about that partnership. Oh, cool. There you go. First question, boys. Let's start with you, Tyler. Yep. Oilers played very well in game one, but what do they need to do to keep it going in game two? What do they do? Keep your structure off the rush and defensively. That's the big thing. I thought, you know, Dallas, they like flying the zone. They like getting ahead of things and playing with pace. I thought for the most part, Edmonton did a good job of mitigating that. When they did get set up in the offensive zone, they were keeping them to the outside. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just say that. Keep up the defensive structure, and I have full confidence that the power play will get some looks and score, and that they'll score on a few more of their opportunities than they did. Jay, they did a lot of good things game one. What they got to do in game two? Uh, let's keep this penalty kill buzz. And like, I was going to say the same thing Tyler said, because I just love the team defensive structure, but just this, this keep this penalty. Did I, oh, did I say power play? I meant to say penalty, penalty kill. Okay. Yeah. Just keep this penalty kill mojo going. Cause you, we've, it's a big reason for that victory last night. Liam? I will say, continue to limit the stars stars. Easier said than done, but if you can manage that, then I think you're on course for another win. Question number two. What were the vibes like at American Airlines Arena for game one? Liam, I'm going to reverse the order. Uh, I think the vibes were interesting. Okay. They were Well, it was like quiet, right? Like, and I don't know if it was just like where we were sat that like maybe we didn't get the full atmosphere because we were like the front row of our section. Maybe if we were more within the crowd it would have been good but I, I really like how they stand for the entire third and overtime i think that's good that gives me good football vibes yeah the standing is good yeah. uh it was very loud to start like with that like the, the, the building was electric to start and we quickly took the air out of that and it never got back to that level even when the stars were 
I guess for brief moments when they score, it would pop off, but like it would die back down. It like sometimes that like that that carries it carries on, and it didn't. So that I found that interesting. And then I know we've shouted this out a lot, uh, uh, many a times, but just the vibes from Stars fans interacting with Oilers fans. They were solid. We're solid. Yep. Tyler. Very solid. Yeah, Stars fans were really, really nice. I do agree. Like it was, it, it's a, it was a pretty quiet barn. That was not Western Conference Final Game One loud, even from the get go. So really, the get go. I, I, I thought the intro was lame. And I oh, the, the intro crowd, was lame. They're, yeah, their in-game is... And not wow. everyone, like, the crowd wasn't full for, the for like, the anthems and stuff. So the but it's anthem, cool what they do for the anthem. Uh, when they all they all they, No, but they all... Yeah, but they all stand and, and turn, turn towards to the, the, the flight, flight, even yeah. for the Canadian anthem. Yeah, I they, yep, they, they, like they, that. Yeah. And there was and even some guys singing the Canadian anthem behind us. Yes, well. I like those. Those were really knowledgeable hockey fans because they would rip us about the Oilers they would rip their own team mm-hmm. at the same time. And like their jokes was, were good. And their jokes were good. And they played, <laughs> we, and we would throw stuff back their way and they played really nice. So Brett Kissel tweeted out <laughs> that the Canadian anthem yesterday was sang in 37 seconds. So they, they just whizzed right through it, which uh-huh. I did find that it was a fast pace, but whatever. Just uh-huh. get through it. I'm so in the z- zone. I'm not even paying, yeah, attention. paying attention. For my, so nervous. For my thoughts on the vibes in there. You guys covered it all. I just want to say that the playoff or play AI off thing that they do in Dallas is very bizarre. Super weird. It's like, so I, I can't shake the comment and I wish I could find it quickly on Instagram, but somebody goes, that reminds me of an Xbox 360 launch event. <laughs> if you want to see the whole pregame presentation, I posted it up on the Oilers Nation Instagram. Go check it out. It is a little bizarre. Yeah, it was super weird. Because didn't you say that they were posting all that stuff on social, Tyler, and, and they then they just it. stopped? Yeah. But in the arena, it's still there. Yeah. It's super odd. Yeah, they got roasted online. I know Pete Blackburn was kind of the one leading the charge. Like, this is dumb as hell. So they pulled it from their site and stuff. But they're still doing it in person. Third question. Ask the idiots for our friends at Boston Pizza. And this is more of a kind of a general hockey question. Uh, comes in from Ed. Should, the, should NHL teams do more load management? You see it all the time in baseball and basketball. When a pitcher gets soreness or tendonitis, it is quite common for him to be shut down for a few weeks. Well, in baseball, you play a million games a year. So there's a bit more time. Is this like a regular that. season question or playoffs? Regular season? I don't know. Just a general general question. See, I think the answer is no. But I think if a player is hurt, then yes, they should take time. Like there was the Elias Patterson thing yes. where he's like, I've been injured since January. It's okay. Take a week off. But like it shouldn't be load management to be afraid of them getting injuries. Because you look at Vegas, and I know it worked for them once, but the second time, even Mark Stone says, like, we should have focused on the regular season more. You need to it, get it in is important, but also getting a good seed to play a better opponent that will help you is also very important. Tyler? That's like a, that's like, like a different form of load management, like opponent load. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm trying to think if I can even add anything to Liam. I like the Vegas comp there. Like if a guy's hurt, good, yeah. you, you, you but like, let him like, recuperate. Yeah. But like I, I don't think the Oilers would at all benefit from December 15th playing San Jose and being like Connor and Leon are playing. Play him 15 minutes instead of 20. Play him 14 minutes instead of 20. But there's no need to park him in the press box, was, especially because in the NHL, like, and I know this is the case. Connor's going to want to play. But yeah, but I think the gap's a little bit bigger in basketball where like if you're one of the top end teams, you can beat a lower team without your best player sometimes. And in hockey, I know you could, but like anyone can beat anyone. And I wouldn't want to run that risk. Every I, point's I, too I, I struggle with the, the, the load management and like, Unless you have an injury, and they do with Connor, like Connor's hurt, they take him out. Yeah. Aside from that, he wants to play. Yeah, I just that was going to be my answer too. I think like reducing the minutes is probably the way to quote yes. unquote load management. Yes. But like Connor McDavid, you're not going to keep him out of the lineup if he's healthy enough to go. He's playing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That that's the way you do it. I think if if you're going into a game and we saw the others do this, and you're blowing a team out four nothing on into the third. Then yeah, McDavid and Drysaddle don't need to go out for every power play. Yep, just yeah. rotate your lines and do it from that. But like, I don't think it should be based off fear of someone getting hurt. Nope, agreed. Yeah, you can't there live you that way, people. No, you can't. You can't. Just like yeah, yeah, because then we shouldn't do anything. We shouldn't. Exactly. We should stay in this room all day. I have been here all day. I'm excited <laughs> to leave. Yeah. I bag milk had a very comfortable work day in the he sense did. of he was grinding and pumping out the work but in a very comfortable setting. Yeah, laid up in bed. It was nice. Yeah, for like three hours. Just it was like room service to your bed, but it was a laptop and you had a lot of shit to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, your- all right. Let's wrap up the show. All right, before we wrap up the show, we're going to step aside actually for a quick break. Are we doing hot and cold reformers? 
We're going to wrap up the show with hot and cold performers brought to you by Great Clips. <laughs> Jay, the show has structure and Jay's like, what the hell is going like, on? Like you, you, you started you're like, well, we'll save that for this segment. Then you said we're wrapping up the show. And I'm like, wait a minute. I said, we're going to before we wrap up the show, we're going to step aside for a quick break. And as we do every episode, we wrap up the show with our hot and cold performers or every Friday, I should say, with more than 4,400 hair salons throughout the United States and Canada. Great Clips is the world's largest hair salon brand and official hair salon of the NHL. Salons are locally owned and operated seven days a week. And your time is valuable. Use the Great Clips check-in app. See the wait time. Check in on your phone and get a haircut when you want. For more information, check out greatclips.com. Great Clips. It's gonna be great. Uh, as we do, we start with our veggies and bag milk because you're usually the one hosting this bad boy. You never get to go first. So I'm going to let you go first. Your cool performer of the week. I am going to say that it was very disappointing that Jay had to negotiate with about five employees at Hooters, just for us to have a celebratory beer last night. The restaurant. The restaurant. The it, restaurant is, is. it is a there, restaurant. It's, it's a restaurant pub. I so never, never mind. We went there for a celebratory beer. It was one of the only places open on our walk back to the hotel. And we we're like, one beer, let's go back to the hotel. Every time Jay would say, I just want to have a beer, they'd be like, but the kitchen's closed. Yeah. They're like, no, 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 I understand yeah. that. But the bar is right there. Just we'll sit at a yeah. different table. We will order from the bar. Just let us have a beer. This went on for like 10 minutes. And then they walked us to a table like, oh, wait a minute. No, we can't do that. And then they took us back to the lobby. We're like, what? And then they were like, oh, well, we're closing in in 30 minutes anyways or 25 minutes anyways. And we're like, that lines up. We're getting one beer. And then they eventually. And I'm negotiating with the manager who was also garnishing a pistol. Yeah, he was strapped up. Yep. (laughs) Which is Texas open carry state. (laughs) That's totally normal. Cold performer. Hooters. Brr. Liam? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that. Um, my cold performer, the airport for ruining our bags. Oh, yeah. We have to go buy a new bag today for the poles for our backdrop. The poles are also extremely dented yeah, now. They're bang- I'm surprised you were even able to like assemble the backdrop. Well, it's because we're so strong. You are we strong, man. To form everything. Liam's so- got two guns. Boom. <laughs> That might be my best ON. That was a great line. Um, yeah, so that was frustrating for the for the the poles came out to paint an image on the belt, and I was stood there, and the bag is just wide open, and the poles are just hanging out. And then we have a what would you call that box? Like a years? hard case. A, a pelican hard ca- case, yeah. A pelican case, of course. And it was open, and a bunch of our wires for our mics were just hanging out. Yep. So we're probably lucky everything even came with us. Yeah. So that sucks. That, I was certain that there was going to be at least one pole. Yeah, missing. like the, f- the tripod broke. The, yeah. The mic light sensor broke. They were chucking stuff. There's that's also just one random piece. I think it's on the counter behind BM there on the ledge. I don't know where that's from. It's from something. <laughs> bonus piece. It's just yeah. a bonus piece. I can't figure it out. It was a gift from. for the damage. Here, have this piece. <laughs> uh, Jay, you're a cool performer. Though. Well, I said at the beginning, and I'll say it again. Uh, I'm. We don't do this in Edmonton during the playoffs, but cutting off booze sales yeah and it's not like i was drinking aggressively but one was having one beer a period and then they cut that off and remember we flew in on a red eye so we're exhausted so that taking that away kind of loses the the flow thankfully the oilers were showing up and playing good in overtime so it kept me engaged but my cool performer is the american airlines arena or the hangar as they call it uh, all right, my cold performer of the week is going to be how muggy it is outside oh. in Dallas. It is everywhere is air conditioned to a very, very cold level. And then you go outside and it's just like, whoa, you get hit with a wave of just like gross, muggy humidity. It it's, is so humid. It's not my style. It is not my style at all. So the weather in Dallas gets my cold performer of the week. So oh, whatever. that's cold. To oh, quote our cold. show, Bag Milk, you get the saddlebags. Yes, 100%. Big red dog indeed. <laughs> Uh, hot performers <laughs> of the week. Let's flip it around. Jay, I'll let you go first. Hot performers? Yeah. Uh, I am going to shout out for hot performers. It can be about the hockey or it can be about the can hockey. Be whatever, whatever you want. You want. I'm, I, I'm just so in love with how we the team is playing defensive playoff hockey. I just It's something we've never seen, and we're seeing it consistently right now since game six. And it's it's what's making me feel Hot inside. I like that. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. Liam, hot performer of the week. Hot performer of the week. Um, I guess, what was yours, Jay? Sorry. Just the def- defensive play. Of the defensive Oilers. play. I'll say um, 
the Dallas fans have now gone on three road trips to see the play LA and Vancouver, and it was testy to say the least in those yeah. other two places. But yesterday was good just to have conversation with people and not be called certain and like and like times. Best of luck. Yeah. Enjoy good luck the series. To you. It's like and it's gonna be a great series. And also just like how they were excited that we flew down from Edmonton to watch the. They Oilers think that's play. crazy. They think it's amazing. Even, so even the one guy yesterday we were talking to, the El Salvadorian, who was like, <laughs> I wasn't really sure which way the conversation was. going. I thought he was coming to pick a fight, kind of. You and called then, him El Salvadorian Chalmers. Yes, and then eventually he invited <laughs> us to go out to watch the horse racing tomorrow. Which I am <laughs> which so, so I kind of want to give a quasi hot performer to those two guys. Yep, because they came to our table to kind of talk shit, but they did it in a very like. <laughs> friendly manner because yeah, it, it, it was a back and forth and what turned it out of it is we're going to go to the horse races because that's where the one ga- guy who works tomorrow before the game and then we're meeting the other guy for pre-game beers yeah we are said he'd buy us a shot gentleman's agreement a gentleman's, gentleman's agreement. agreement we shook hands uh all right there's liam's hot former bm i'm going to give it to the one and only banjo guy he okay. is arguably Oof. the most famous person in texas right now we were with him before the game and I, he can't go three feet without someone wanting to take a picture with him and he handles it with grace he and loves he it. loves it and he's just in his element there so banjo guy you deserve a little bit of love from me yeah. big shout out to banjo guy he's a beauty had a chance to crush a couple with him before the game as well that was a lot of fun and, and stars fans were buying him drinks at the bar pregame yeah they were he, did, yep. he said he didn't pay for a drink earlier on so that's crazy he's like this is awesome um all right my hot form of the week was gonna yeah it's gonna be dylan holloway if mm-hmm. you go watch the video jack michaels posted jack jack's call unbelievable great the footage from oilers tv catches dylan holloway pointing at banjo guy in the corner and then you actually hear banjo guy being like holloway yeah let's go so that was an awesome moment that uh oilers tv and that that is that's a special moment and yeah it's a special moment for a lot of reasons and the thing i kind of want to hone in on that is just the fact that a player would go and like do that to a fan like that 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 means a lot uh and once again it just it shows that these guys are playing for us you know yep because if you don't know, like Banjo Guy, he comes to these things by himself. He parks himself. He had like he was right on the goal. He line gets the night. best seats he can, uh, and gets himself in prominent places. Mm-hmm. Sorry, BM, I cut you off there. No, no, that's exactly it. So he was right in the mix. He was by himself. Well, Liam and I like to play. Where's Banjo? Yeah, like where's Waldo? Yeah, but where's Banjo? We always like to find guy. him from across the arena. Yeah. And uh, yeah, great moment for him. Well deserved. He puts in three hours on that makeup. Just if you are unaware. Three hours on game days, so and the design game. yesterday was, it was cool. Mint. I like we said, like he takes a lot of pictures for people, but like he doesn't have to do that. Stuff and he's got stickers. Right? He gives stickers to everyone. Yeah, like he he, nice. he 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 does love it, which is good. Yeah. Obviously, you you must to take it that far. What was actually the funniest was him entering the building because they oh, obviously yeah. <laughs> very heavy metal detection and oh, stuff man, there, yeah. and his his um overalls are just littered with pins. <laughs> so he had to go to like secondary and like third tertiary security screening. It took him like 15 minutes to get into the building. Yeah. Also shout out beauty. to the stars for just letting him do his thing. Yep. That too, like if were. you heard in Vancouver or not Vancouver in LA, LA he was only allowed to play paint half his face for whatever reason. Yeah. Star- he told me yesterday, he emailed the stars ahead of time. Just be like, Hey, this is what ah. I do. Is that cool? And they go, yeah, man, do your thing. We'd love to have it. Awesome. All right. What happened? Honorary hot performer Jay and his is choked himself. Oh, yeah. A little, went down the wrong pipe. Ah, well, that's all right. Uh, Kate, okay, that's a wrap. We got. Oh, uh, oh. oh you give yo, your hot performers Dylan Hallway. Yeah, Dylan Hallway. Because he also had a good game. Yeah, we have to cut this short because we are going to Jerry World. I'm going to go kick a field goal. We don't have a football. We have to get a football. Surely they have one. Yeah, maybe. We We're- heard that if you bring a football, they'll let you kick field goals and like throw it around really? the field. Yeah. Oh, so we should have been baked in time to go to Target. Well, we are leaving a little we, early. F- yeah, maybe we could stop. All right. Okay, that's a wrap on this week's edition or Hang this on. Friday edition of the pod. Score prediction for game two. Come uh, on. I'm going to say the Oilers squeak out another one, win 4 3. I uh, I nailed it uh, last game. I said 3 2, and I just think these are just going to be a myriad of 3 2 games. Oilers. Yeah, I'll say 3 2 again. Oilers. 4 2, but they get the empty netter to close it up. Ooh, Hell yeah. No one's going goals this playoffs. Yeah. All right, that is a wrap on this Friday edition. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the game. Oilers Nation every day live at noon on Saturday. Tune in then.